But weaving's been going on for a long, long time. I mean, to, you know, the initial weaving, first you have to have the thread. So how do they make the thread? You know, they find cordage, they find vine, they find plant fibers that they can use. So basketry, basket weaving is weaving in three dimensionally. So all the pomo baskets that are so unbelievable made from this area and known the best of the baskets from the whole of the United States. Um, were done with you know red bud and sedge and all kinds of different things and then they wove the tule baskets that they used it was like a giant tule basket it was a boat a canoe a tule canoe and so weaving has gone on in all kinds of different cultures and the first loom I'm not sure when the first loom was developed but it was probably just a primitive frame loom where you just have threads going up opposite and so the more complex the patterns get, the fancier the looms got, all the way up until the jacquard loom. So it's about the fanciest loom. But, but Jan's right in that the, some of the things that you look were, were done in pre-Columbian Peruvian textiles are really stunning, the techniques and, and um, threads and patterns that they create, just all with hand, completely hand manipulated. My name is Sheila O'Hara, and uh, maybe my Irish DNA has me predisposed to weaving. <laughs> but uh, as a kid, I learned how to weave when I was 10 in San Francisco at the Junior Museum. My mom was an artist, and she always had us doing art projects, you know, weaving, drawing, pastels, painting, making, you know, little dioramas with lichen trees and popsicle sticks and all that kind of stuff. And so as a kid, we would go to the Junior Museum and take art classes in the summer. And one of the classes was weaving, so that's when I first learned how to weave when I was 10. And then when I was in um, high school, I went back and did some more weaving at the same place on my own. And then I found by chance the catalog for California College of Arts and Crafts, and you could get a degree in weaving. And so I have a bachelor's degree in weaving. Better than I expected. Oh, so that's the tabby. That's the tabby. Okay. And that's the little pattern. So the okay. square. So it's working out, especially when you take it off tension, you get the... Oh, it feels pretty nice. So I wanted to do one about global warming, but instead of bad chemistry, I'm circling the earth with hearts nice. for love. And so I wasn't sure what continents to put on, so I found this drawing that I didn't do, but it was from a, a while ago. And it's actually, um, if you look at it, it's actually North and South America, which we don't really look at it this way. So I realized that as I was traveling around through the community about my errands, I'd find myself staring at people's clothing. And I realized what was attracting me was the texture in garments, you know, the fabric texture. And so I, it occurred to me that, that uh, maybe I would be interested in weaving and it was a point in my life where I could actually have the time to go to a weaving class. So I started out in Ukaya at the beginner's level and from there it progressed. If you, if you had to describe the uh, practice of weaving in a word, what would the word be? It requires patience. That's two words. Oh. Patience? Fun, <laughs> creative. It's hard to put one word on it. <laughs> yeah, it's the satisfying. Mode. Satisfying. That's true. It is satisfying. Yeah. So if you reverse the pattern, you can get little diamonds. And so that's what I did on this one here. Yeah. So every Tuesday, I teach class at my house in the afternoon. Wow. So this is woven by Jan Eckert, and it's woven in three 125 inch long pieces, and then you sew them together. So this is called an overshot pattern, which is a classic kind of traditional pattern. So it makes these patterns that almost look like a quilt pattern in a way. And it's called overshot because it's woven with a white warp and a white weft. If you pulled all the blue yarn out, you'd still have white cloth. And then on the sides, we have white on white to match. So. So it's, so you weave, you know, I forget, we put on 15 yards or something and then she wove one day a week, one afternoon a week for about a year. Wow. Anyway, and, and so she got a blue ribbon.